Hey guys, welcome to Allotronics, I'm Gregory and in this video we are going to take a look on crystal overtone oscillators. Let's go! Here you have the circuit working and we can see that we are generating a frequency at the third harmonic of this crystal. This is a 16 MHz crystal and the oscillator is running at 48 MHz, three times the main frequency. We can turn the circuit to change the crystal overtone. Here we are running at harmonic number 5 or overtone number 5, 8 MHz because it's five times the main frequency of the crystal and we can adjust to the harmonic number seven or overtone number seven here. At the overtone number seven the frequency is 112 megahertz or seven times the main crystal frequency. This spectrum energy fluctuation here is the FM broadcast radius because we are very close to the FM frequencies. This is not a signal of the oscillator and it is not the phase noise of the signal. That FM broadcast noise is coming from these leads here that act as antennas for VHF. Very interesting. Looking at the circuit, we see the crystal, the BJT transistor, a two coil inductor and a variable capacitor that makes the tuned circuit that maximizes the gain of the circuit at the desired overtone frequency. And here we see other inductor that I placed here to increase the frequency selectivity and stability as we're going to see on the whiteboard. Before I explain the circuit, let's first understand why a crystal can oscillate at odd multiples of its main frequency. From an electrical perspective, the crystal so it looks like this electrical circuit here. We have the emotional capacitance, the emotional inductance and a series resistance. The crystal has parasitic capacitance that appears across in parallel with the electrical circuit. The series capacitance and inductance is called motional parameters because these are electrical parameters that represent the mechanical behavior of the crystal. Because the crystal cut has mass, springiness and dampening and this mechanical behavior appears to the electrical circuit as capacitance inductance and resistance. The parasitic parallel capacitance comes from the construction of the crystal and the plates, the connection of the crystal cut with the connectors. So we can see that we have almost a parallel structure here that creates parallel capacitance across the two leads of the inductor. Looking at the electrical equivalent of the crystal, we see that we can have series resonance when we have resonance of these two parameters here the series tank or we can have a parallel resonance when we have the resonance of the series inductance with the parallel capacitor. We are going to study more crystals in next videos. What happens is that the mechanical construction or the mechanical cut of the crystal allows oscillation of odd multiples of the main frequency. When you apply voltage to the crystal it will stretch in these directions but the mechanical behavior is that we can have oscillations at three times the frequency, five times the frequency, seven times the frequency, nine times and so on. All the odd multiple or odd overtone. This behavior comes from the mechanical oscillation of the crystal. From the electrical perspective, what happens is that the crystal looks like a network of resonant tank. We have the main frequency series resonance that is equal as the simplified model, but we also have series tanks at three times the frequency, at five times the frequency and more series resonance at seven times, nine times and so on. The emotional inductance seems almost unchanged at higher overtones, but the series capacitance appears decreased by the overtone number squared. If you have the capacitance over nine, three squared, we have a series tank that will resonate at three times the frequency. The emotional capacitance over 25 will resonate at five times the frequency. This squaring relation comes from the formula of a resonant tank. One over two pi square root of LC. To make an oscillator that oscillates at the higher overtones, we need to make a circuit that provides the maximum gain at the desired overtone. So we can sustain the oscillation at a higher frequency. So if we want to oscillate at the third overtone, we need to create a circuit that provides the maximum gain at the third overtone frequency. To maximize the gain at the desired overtone, reducing the phase margin, allowing the oscillation behavior, we are going to design an oscillator that has a tuned tank 
at the desired frequency. So guys, this is the circuit I designed for this overtone oscillator. We start the circuit with a common bass amplifier made by the transistor, the bass capacitance that grounds the bass and the biasing supply. I bias the transistor with 2 milliamp. The biasing is provided by the H2K resistor here at the base and we can't forget to ground the base of the transistor to act in common base topology. I use a common base configuration because it has more bandwidth as we saw in this video here in the ticket because the common base topology don't suffer from the Miller effect. You can learn more about Miller effect clicking here. We can see that you have a tuner tank at the collector of the transistor. So the gain of the transistor of this stage will be maximized at the resonance frequency of the collector tank this inductor and the variable capacitor and this capacitor is where we're gonna tune the desired harmony or overtone so this inductor and this capacitor makes a parallel resonance tank that is the load of the transistor to make this thing oscillate we need to feedback part of the output signal here back to the input and the input of a common base topology is the emitter the signal will enter the emitter we are modulating the emitter current and the transistor is reflecting this modulation to the collector. So the input of the circuit is the emitter. And you are going to use the crystal at a series resonance. So we are going to use the crystal series resonance, this path here, to feedback part of the output signal back to the input, creating the oscillation behavior. We need to provide positive gain and the correctness phase to allow for oscillation. And this feedback action is made by the series resonance path of the crystal allowing oscillation. We are using a tapped inductor. So we have a tap here because we need to provide a very low impedance to drive the crystal. So we provide the crystal a low impedance so the crystal can drive the emitter of the transistor because the emitter is a low impedance in so we need to provide a signal at a low impedance here in the input of the crystal to match the impedance of the emitter here of the transistor this lead here it's at zero volts for an ac signal because we have this capacitor grounding for ac this node here this node of the inductor we call code node because it's the node near to ground so the impedance from zero is increased in the direction of the collector of the transistor here we have maximum impedance here we have a low impedance point where we can tap the energy to allow the feedback through the crystal to the emitter this impedance matching is actually causing the impedance of the emitter that is reflected through the crystal to appear larger here at the collector and this is important because this impedance that will control quality factor of the resonant tank we need to show to the resonant tank a very high impedance so the resonant point will be very narrow and the bandwidth of the resonance will be very narrow allowing the correct selectivity of frequency to select the correct overtone so turning this capacitor we select the highest gain possible at the desired frequency we want to oscillate selecting the correct path of resonance of the crystal because if we provide the amplifier with maximum gain let's say here at overtone number five the oscillator will oscillate at this frequency because for the other resonant modes the system will have lower gain and more phase margin a common approach would be to use a resistor in place of this inductor but with the resistor this circuit was very difficult to tune because the resistor here will provide a more flatness of gain when adjusting here because you have a resistive load here that will not make part of the resonance circuit what i discovered in my testing is that placing an inductor here to isolate the dc bias from the ac the inductor as it is a reactance makes part of the resonance tank increasing a lot the selectivity of the tuning very interesting if you think about this you can see that for lower frequencies or for lower overtones the reactance of this inductor will be lower shunting the feedback decreasing the gain at lower frequency so this inductor is key to make this circuit work properly here in between parentheses i put the reactance i use it 
and I recommend for the circuit. So these are not inductance, but are the reactances of the inductors at the desired overtone needed. So first you calculate the inductors using the reactances, and after you know the inductor, you calculate the capacitance using the resonance formula. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and I see you in the next video.